Welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing tonight. We have Scott Zipidelli on the phone with us. I've got Maddie Ryan and Alicia Porter. Potter, excuse me. Here, smack my hand. I did it wrong. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to take an interview with the girls here with some nice, young, fresh blood in the racing world. Uh, you guys can feel free to ask Scott anything that you want. You alright with that, Scott? Yeah, you're right here. All right, go ahead and give us a little background about yourself so people will know where you came from and how you got into racing. You're talking to me, right? Yes, sir. You're first on the list, but that's okay. all right. I know. You know. No. Uh, right now, I've joined Red Horse Racing, which is a camping World truck team, and I'm going to coach you for Ben Kennedy in the number 11 truck. Um, last year, I spent uh, the year with Kyle Larson, crew chief in the 42. For Turner Scott Motorsports. Um, in 2013, I was with Justin Allgaier with the same team, which uh, was car number 31. So that's my uh, my last two years. Before that, it goes back to childhood racing and several other race teams. But the past few years, I've been right here and uh, with Turner Scott Motorsports, and then uh, they they closed up the operation. I I, uh, I thought I'd try something new and go truck racing and. Um, try to spend a little more time with the family this year and uh, see how uh, see how the truck racing works. Well, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with the guys at Red Horse Racing. I, I know a few of the people there, and uh, Timothy Peters, I uh, always enjoy getting up with him and getting him on the show here, too, and always enjoy visiting with him when I'm at the track. So you got you got a lot of good, classy people there that you'll be uh, being able to work with. It's, yeah, it's, it's actually um, it's really exciting. Um, they're really nice people. They're uh, very uh, Tom DeRoche has a, a strong faith, and uh, he, he runs a really nice uh, family style race team. Um, it's not it's not quite the, the corporate style team that, that I've been used to the last few years, or actually my whole career. But um, it's a little bit different, and uh, you know it's a little bit of a curveball trying to learn learn the trucks. So they're, they're obviously a little bit different aero package than the cars, but. Um, Pretty much a lot of the same rules apply. So I've been studying a lot, looking at what they've done the last few years, and and uh, trying to uh, try to make a good solid plan, and hopefully get Ben Ben Kennedy uh, right up front, and try to get a couple of wins, and see where we can end up at the end of the year. Now, is this Ben's uh, first year running with them as well? It is. Yes, Ben was with uh, Turner Scott Motorsports last year, and I got to know Ben. We we um we built an ARCA car to go to uh, Pocono to get Kyle Larson some more laps at Pocono, and um, he couldn't make the test, so Ben came and um, he did the test for me. So I got to know Ben there, spent the day with him on the racetrack, and um, our communication was good. I really liked him, and uh, we kind of just kind of hit it off, and here we are. Well, good. Now, where are you guys operating out of? Um, it's funny that my new office is right across the street from my old office in, uh, <laughs> that, in Mooresville. That's right. I remember reading that on Facebook. Somebody said, hey, you got a long way to go from one job to the other. Yeah, literally. Uh, I could throw a baseball and hit two buildings, so it's it's pretty cool. My my, uh, my alarm clock was off at the same time. My truck was out to get there, and it's, it was pretty easy transition. Well, you're going to get one of these mornings, you're going to have a long, hard night. You'll get up and get ready to go down there, and all of a sudden you go to turn right instead of left, or, or vice versa. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Uh, um, the trucks are a lot different. You know, the racing is about the same as a nationwide, so it's easier to go from a, a nationwide car to a truck than it would be for a cup guy to go to a nationwide car or a truck because of the rules and the tire strategy and the fuel strategy, but... Um, you know, get some really good teammates there and, and a lot of good notes to, to go through and, and kind of get up to speed on how, how the program works. Now, how did you find having Kyle as your driver and, and crew chiefing for him in the Nationwide last year? Uh, we, we had a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was fun. Uh, you know, it took us a little while to to learn each other. Kyle doesn't uh, talk a lot. He doesn't... He doesn't uh, he doesn't give you a lot of um, feedback, and you know he just likes his car, doesn't like his car. So you got you got to work hard to uh, to get that communication down. And um, 
you know, I think we had a very, very successful year for a standalone nationwide team. And uh, we, we, I feel like we, you know, we had a little bit of a lull in the middle of the season when, when our company had a few, uh, a few hiccups. But uh, we rebounded and we almost won the last race of the year. And, and we won a couple other ones. So, uh, you know, I feel like, I feel like we uh, we did well. We executed well. We made some mistakes along the way, but I think it was a solid, uh, successful season. Good deal. Now, I've got Maddie Ryan here. She has uh, recently started racing in the Pro 6 Series at Langley Speedway. Uh, have you ever seen any of those cars? I have not. Tell them about them. It's basically a late model, um, just with Y six inches shorter and has a V6 in it instead of a V8. Oh, that's cool. Is it like crate motor or is it a... Uh, Nissan 3.0. Ah, nice. That's a nice racetrack. I like that place. It very is. It's very... Ever since they did redid the pavement, it's been a lot better. It's been a lot smoother. Uh -huh. How many cars uh, do they race? In the Pro 6 division, um, there are about... We race about 12 to 15. The class has definitely grown over the past year. We should be getting, news-wise, there should, there's been said that there's going to be two or three more coming up. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn uh, short tracks with a car that has no power, right? Basically. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. That's, good. that's a good way to learn, um, you know, this the nationwide cars and the trucks are all about all about momentum and uh, the guys that can you know keep the motors wound up, keep the momentum in the in the vehicle um, do do very well. Where the cup style cars, they have so much power, it's it's not quite like that, you know. So that's a good thing to learn. Now, how how's it been? And, and I know you are probably under the shadow of having to deal with your brother Greg. I think it's the other way around, actually. Oh, okay. I like that attitude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, it's it's all good. Well, you know, we grew up on the same same team, working on the same race cars until until he decided to move south, and I decided to pursue a driving career. Um, and uh, my driving career didn't work out so well, so then I followed him. He came down here, but um, it's it's good. It has its ups and it has its downs. You know, the, the upsides are, you know, we're in racing and we understand how, how it works and and uh, we've had a lot of success together. And so maybe the downs are, um, there's a lot of politics in professional sports, so, you know. Really? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. So, you know, sometimes people expect too much of you or less of you until they realize you're, you're two different individuals, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very content with Nationwide Racing, and now I'm content where I am in the truck, truck series. I, I spent six years on the road cup racing, and, um, you know, I, it's, it's all fun when you're young, but it's a really long, hard, hard road, and I didn't see myself doing it. I didn't see myself becoming a crew chief in the cup series unless I worked my way up from the Nationwide Series. And then if I did well, somebody would grab me and take the cup race. So um, I decided to go that, that route. But you know, the sport has changed. It's all engineered based. If you don't have an engineering degree, it's really hard to get a shot at a, at a cup crew chief these days. So, yeah. um, you know, you, you just got to be happy with, within yourself and, uh, and happy with what you're doing. You, you can't really live under the shadow of, of anybody else because we're all just our own people, you know. Yeah. Now, I notice you're also called Zippy, just like Greg is. Now, who's the real Zippy? Uh, that would be my grandfather. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that would be my grandfather, Charlie, and then my father, Chick, and then my brother and myself. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because, um, you know, all my friends and people that I work with call me that, and then they call him that, and, but, uh... I mean, I could see y'all guys be out at Martinsville and just have to be sort of close to each other, and somebody yells, hey, Zippy. And watch both of you flip around. Yeah, yeah, that probably would happen, but um, yeah, I mean, I can't complain about it. It's a uh, family, family lineage, right? There you go. Keep it all in the family. 
-hmm. What uh, I know this is early. Y'all got uh, as usual. Red horse racing always has a full schedule. Um, any tracks that you feel you're going to be doing better at than others? Um, I, I honestly, I'm optimistic. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic everywhere we go. Uh, we built. Um, we got a new truck going to Atlanta. We just blew it at the wind tunnel. It was it was way better than what they had last year. Um, I think it's better than what Ben drove last year. Cool. Hit it off and and um, and and figure something out for him. You know, he's never been to Atlanta, so there's a little bit of a learning curve there. But um, no, I'm looking forward to going to Martinsville. I haven't been able to race at Martinsville since I left the Cup Series, and that's uh, that's just an awesome. Awesome racetrack. I remember going there as a little kid working on my uncle's modified. So I love that place. Um, I, I'm, you know, we're going to go uh, a couple races at a time, not to not look too far ahead. Just try to focus on where we're at and try to come up with a good solid uh, baseline package that we can we can race at a lot of different places. To work on. Do you? Uh... What what do you feel is going to be your hardest track? Um, you know, I think Atlanta is going to it could be difficult. You know, that's not going to be an easy racetrack. Um, but uh, you know, if we execute well, I think you know I'm I'm optimistic we can have a good week. Um, you know, Daytona is always difficult, right? You got to. You got to be at the right spot at the right time, and you can't get tore up. So you got to be smart there. It's really hard to pinpoint the, the most difficult track. Yeah. I'd say the mile and a half. Uh, we we got to work hard to get uh, a good solid package where Ben can really uh, be aggressive. Now, I'm not really trying to put your heart on the spot, but hey, we got to really dig into you every once in a while, you know. No, it's not hard at all. <laughs> um, you know, Texas is always a, uh, 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 a tough place. It, you know, you're going to practice in the day and race at night, so it changes a lot. And, oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know what? Honestly, people ask me a question, what's the hardest track? I'm going to tell you what, they're all hard. There you go. That's a good... There is a not. Talladega is probably the easiest place you can go. Um, and that's changing as the asphalt gets older and older and the place gets bumpier and bumpier, but... Um, every race we go to is extremely difficult because the competition level is so good. Um, we're going, you know, the speeds are so fast at every single track. So you're you're just working hard every week to to get that extra extra little bit of speed and comfort for the driver. So now, in Talladega, I think they're all extremely stressful and we're all hard. Now here's a good one for you. Now, this will probably be your first time going to Eldora and going out and running on the dirt with the trucks. What do you think, what do you think about that? I, I'm not really excited about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love dirt racing, and I will go dirt racing any day with the right car, right, their car. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really going to have to get my arms around this one and, and really study and work hard to try to figure this out because it's, it's definitely different. Well, we also have a young lady in here. Her name is Alicia Potter. She runs carts as well as bandoleros. Did you have a question for him? Um, what was your first car? My first street car? Just your first car in general. Race car? Or race car. Race car. My first race car. Um, I started racing quarter midgets when I was 12 and uh, went to go-karts. And then I went to late models, and I did a, a lot of legend car racing, and ran some a uh, couple of midget races, raced some snowmobiles. I tried just about everything, and uh, I realized when I was 29 that it just wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was getting beat by young kids that had better stuff, and they were better than I was. So um, you guess while you probably when you know, a 16-year-old kid puts uh, your butt at a <laughs> half-mile racetrack, you know? So, um, I had fun, and then uh, I've been a fabricator, a welder. Um, it's what pretty much paid my way through racing in my career. So, I um, 
I had that to fall back on, and then I just started, uh, I gave that up and went to work for uh, a couple of race teams, and one thing led to another, I ended up down here. Wow. Cool. Well, i tell you what, I know you probably have more stuff to get your head around for the next few days. Y'all already back on full work to work shifts and everything? Yeah, we are. We're um, we're not working late. Um, we're setting goals in the shop, and if the guys meet the goals, you know, they go home at four o'clock. If if we fall behind, we'll we'll adjust. But uh, you know, we we hope we don't have to push our guys too hard. We we try to set good goals and be real organized, so uh, everybody can can um, go home and see their families. So that's very important. Okay. On the season. Maddie said she's got another question for you. Um, with, I know it's different for drivers working with different crew chiefs, but how difficult is it for a crew chief to get new drivers every couple years and just get settled in with that driver and then have to switch over to different teams and whatnot? For some, for some people, it's very difficult and some people don't do well with it. Um, just like it would be for a driver. You know, they, you get that certain chemistry, either you click or you don't click, whether you like each other or you don't. Um, for me, I, I don't mind it at all. Um, I have never had the same driver two years in a row since the day I became a crew chief in the uh, Nationwide Series in 2006. So every year I've ended up with a different driver. And, and I think that's helped me adapt better to new drivers and have an open mind. But, you know, I feel like if I could have had a second year with um, with Justin Allgaier, we would have been better than a fourth place championship car. If I had a second year with Kyle Larson, now that I know him, I feel like we could have built better cars. And with our chemistry, we could have been even stronger this coming year. But the business changes so much, you have to, you got to adapt to it and just keep rolling. So um, it's, it's difficult, but... Um, for some people more than others. Gotcha. Good answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd... you know, you have to have an open mind, you have to be patient, and you have to learn the body language, you have to pay attention to their voice, their, you know, how their voice changes, and you can kind of just tell their mannerisms and how severe the problems are. Or, um, you know, it takes a little while to, to figure a person out. Yeah, um, you, you yourself have to become really fluid in being able to change with the flow of each of the drivers. I mean, when you started talking about the the tone of their voice, you know, going into a corner and all of a sudden it goes up a couple of octaves, yeah, that's really loose, you know, know something's going on, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, some guys are easier to, to, uh, to figure out than others. Kyle is really calm, he doesn't talk a lot on the radio, so he's, you know, he doesn't say a whole lot, so it's hard pull a lot of information from and some guys will give you, you know, four laps of information that half of it you don't even want to hear because it doesn't matter, matter yeah. right? Um, so you just kinda gotta get through it and, and eventually it's it's a relationship. Yeah. You don't you don't want to get too close to the person, you know, personally, because then you can't you can't sit down and look them in the eye and go, You're being a jerk, you know. Yeah. And, you know, they can't do the same thing you if you get, like, really close, you kind of don't want to offend anybody. But, you know, it's it's professional sports today, and you have to be honest, and you got to be hard at times, and you got to be soft at times. And some people some people do well when you kick them in the butt, some do well when you tap them on the back, right? Yeah. I know uh, Derek Nealon, who spots for Kyle, I've, I've talked with Derek quite often, good friend with him, and he, he seems to enjoy working with Kyle. Um, like he, like you said, not not a lot of words being there, but just enough to get the information across. No, Derek actually talks uh, way more than Kyle does. Well, I I wasn't saying Derek was doing that. I was talking about Kyle, but yeah, Derek. Yeah. Derek's talker. Yeah. Derek's a chatterbox on the radio, and I had to get used to that because I wasn't used to a spotter to talk that much. But he uh, talks a lot, and I think at times it came. It hurt Kyle and I communicating because Derek would communicate so much, you know what I mean? But so it's just like it's a relationship with your spotter as well. You've got to you've got to get on the page with him. 
Yeah. And and you you got to uh, you know you got to talk to the spotter on channel two when you're talking to Kyle on channel one so that he can he can pump the driver up and make sure the driver knows that everybody's struggling with the same issue. Let's just figure out how to make the best of this issue and be of everybody. You know. Yeah, I've got an advantage since I used to run lake models quite a bit and then when I quit I started doing spotting for different people and one of the guys I spot with as much as I do, he's one of those that just tell me enough for me to know and that's all I need to know. If, yeah, you know, don't start talking too much because then I'll stop thinking about racing. Some guys, some drivers when they hit that button and start talking to you they just slow down. Yeah. You just they lose their they lose their uh, their focus for just a second. So some guys you you know you don't want to talk to unless you know you can afford it. Yeah, you can afford them to slip up a little bit. And Kyle's one of those guys that can. How's your car? It's okay. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because uh, there there've been times too that they'll sit there tell me everything you can, and you sit there and say how much is everything? You know, you got a car five car five lengths back, uh, you're a second and a half behind the next guy, or, you know, how much do you want to know what you can't already see in the car? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think they need to know too much. You kind of just need to focus on yourself, where you're at on the racetrack, and let the guys around, behind you worry about them, and if you start worrying about this driver, if you start worrying about the car behind you, you're taking focus off what you're doing. Yeah, I just tell them to keep digging, period. Yeah, you just need to run your own race, um, leave a lane open, and if they can find a way around you, they'll go. You know? Some of Mike Stepanek was a, a huge mentor of mine when I was racing, and he he told me one time, he said, listen, he said, if, if a guy runs up behind you, and he, and he runs into the back of you, pushes you out of the way, and he pulls away, all right, sorry, I, hold, I held you up. I was holding you up. But if he doesn't go anywhere and he's right in front of you, then he was just being aggressive and, you know, moving back. Yeah. If something happens, oh well. Yeah. That's kind of the way I raced. You know, if you hit me, I'm, if you drive away, hey man, sorry I held you up. But if you're going to hold me up, I'm going to knock you back out of the way. Now, did you ever, well, this is what we we always raced. You, you had the, the, the two slash three tap rule. Tap me once, that's to let me know you've caught up to me. Tap me twice, lets me know you're faster than I am. And and when I feel that third tap, that means uh, I'm ready to move you over. No, I usually give you a break check. <laughs> <laughs> you do well when people hit me. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, all right, let me go ahead and let you get out of here, and we will catch back up with you again. Um, I'll definitely try to swing by and stop by and chat with you when we get out to Martinsville. All right, it was nice talking to you guys. All right, have a good night, and Happy New Year. Thank you, too. All right. Did y'all get to learn a little something? Yes. Oh, sure. Um, well, I race the number 24 Bangalero and go-kart at Langley Speedway, and I don't just race, I sing, too, and I'm actually singing the National Anthem at Monster Jam, which I'm very honored to do that. Um, I just am so thrilled to do that. It's just a great honor, and I'm also um, part of Champions Against Bullying. I'm the ambassador for it, and what that does is they try to get they try to get them into the school, and what they, what it does is they talk about how to get rid of bullying, basically, and they want they want to stop it, and I I'm, I'm part of that because I really want to stop it. So what happens if somebody comes up to you? Somebody comes up to me, I say just. I just walk away, I just ignore them, um, and if it keeps going on, it keeps happening, then I will go get somebody, and that's basically the best thing you can do, is go get a parent or teacher and talk to them about it. Somebody that's in the authority position. Cool. Now, you're, you're how old now? I'm 12. About the time somebody else started getting into it. <laughs> so how do you like being out there running? I love it. It's just amazing. When I when I got out there on the track, it's like nothing else in the world it matters to me. It's just my mind is clear, and it's just like I'm I'm in a zone that it just. Do you find yourself when you're racing smiling really hard? <laughs> yes. Well, good. 
Because that's, that's one of the things I remember when I was out there. If I was running really good and I was running hard, I was... I was like, yes! <laughs> yes, the, almost like a killer instinct, so to speak. But it's you, you're able to blow off pressure and, and able to have fun. The endorphins are all kicking in, you know, making you feel good. It's like a sugar rush, almost. <laughs> but, uh, so you started out in carts? Yes. And how old were you then? I was about eight or nine when I started carts. But before that, um, I actually ra actually raced with my brother in the backyard. Um, we um, did these little like competitions with our four-wheelers. <laughs> is that what you were calling the quad racing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, these are gas-powered or foot-powered? Uh, the gas. Gas? Oh. Nobody tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what is, what, all right, let's try this. Who is your person that you look up to in racing right now? Who's your mentor and who do you look up to? It's two different people normally. Um, I kind of look up to Danica Patrick because she, to me, she is my role model because she is up there racing and I know it's tough because, you know, I've been out there but she is racing in NASCAR right now and I know how hard that can be, um, a woman and, you know, a boy sport. Um, so I think, I think that she is my role model for sure. Calling in all of a sudden. Excuse me a second. Let's talk racing. Hey Jesse, uh, I didn't realize it was already 7:30. Okay, hang on a second. <laughs> we got our next guy already ready. He'll have to wait a second here while we finish talking with you. Mm -hmm. um, now, who's your mentor? Mentor. Um, let's see. Um, I said Danica Patrick, as I said. Um, for somebody that for, you look up to. For somebody I looked up to. Um, my mentor, um, I think that is my, I have to say my mom and dad, because they always, they Those are always, good mentors. Yes, because they always, like, you know, tell me what to do, like, you know, they put me in the right spot. They yeah. always do. And okay. that, and I love them, so. Well, I hope so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and do Jesse, and then we'll come back and finish up with you, okay. and then we'll really get into Maddie here. Great. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing tonight, Jesse? We got Jesse Vaughn on the line with us. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Give us a little quick bio about yourself and how you got into racing and uh, what you got rolling on now. Um, basically, uh, my dad was uh, worked on pictures when I was growing up, um, worked late models and stuff at Southside. Um, then went around, you know, tire change on the Bush Series, the Cup Series for uh, Judy Dunlevy and the Grove Brothers. Um, so, you know, growing up, I was always around the race shops. Um, ended up helping him uh, with Shane Lockhart on the late model at Southside. And we were at Martinsville a few years ago. Uh, we were a little shorthanded. Uh, he was the normal spotter. And uh, there in practice, he said, you know, I got to stay down here. And he the radio and said, go from the grandstand, you're spotting today. So, started doing it there. Um, and I was spotting for Shane for quite a while, um, helped out Eddie Johnson and Chris Johnson. Um, and then, I guess, two years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, CE Falk gave me a call and said he had a seller modified that needed some help at Langley and um, gave me a phone number and I called and ended up being uh, Georgie Von So, yeah. spotting for Georgie. Yeah, I've been spotting for Georgie for the last year and a half. Um, and when I'm not with him, I'm still doing some, some late models and some, some K&N deals with Sam Hunt and uh, Red Racing, so. Cool. You know a Bobby Hall? Yeah, Bobby actually works with me at UBS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sent me a message on Facebook. He said, I see you got my spotter on tonight. And yeah. Jesse, and you got my competitor on. <laughs> yeah. Why wasn't I invited? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, For Bobby, uh, a couple times at Langley this year, we we won the, uh, the first six race the same night that I was there with Sam for the K&N car, so that was, that was pretty cool. Okay, now what division was Bobby running? Uh, Pro 6. Oh, uh, so you're the competitor. <laughs> I've got Maddie Ryan on here with me tonight too, and Alicia Potter. So, we got two female racers that run out at Langley, so Maddie's the competitor. Yeah, Langley's, Langley's where I, I started doing most of my spotting after, as we left Southside, I kind of, you know, we, we kind of transferred and Langley became a home track, so. Actually, won my first touring race with Georgie at Langley this past year. So, I've probably.
probably bumped into you, and, and, and unless I had a picture, I wouldn't know who you were, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, actually talked to uh, another driver over the weekend, um, Danny Bowen, that races with us, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I kind of reintroduced myself, and he said, yeah, and nice to the uh, face with a voice, so. Yeah, that, that's the biggest thing, um, and I was talking to some people earlier, I said when we go out to the tracks and people that have watched us on the show, since instead of being a, a, a radio show, we're TV, and so we're able to broadcast you know, the guests that come in-house and stuff like this, and we'll be at a track and all of a sudden, hey, I know you, and you're going, okay, <laughs> who is this? Yeah. And so it, it's, it's a little bit strange. You know, like you said, it's always nice to put a face to a voice. Yeah, yeah. Once, once practice starts, we kind of we're up at the top, and then uh, we're kind of hidden until until the checker flag falls. That could be a good thing or a bad thing, I guess. Yeah. Now, what what have you got going on this year that you know that you're going to be doing? Um, right now, probably still with Georgie. Um, they they kind of cut our schedule down a little bit, but so they modified for it. Um, I'll definitely be helping Chris Johnson out some more with the local modified and his weight model. Um, I've gotten. A couple phone calls, um, maybe doing some art at the race and helping out some people. Um, but definitely, definitely George is going to be my my main, uh, I guess, gig um, all year. And then whatever pops up, you know, any, anything available, I'm kind of kind of jump on it the last second. Have you uh, done anything in like trucks or nationwide yet? Uh, I have not done any trucks or nationwide. Uh, I was actually. I had a conversation earlier this week about doing some non-companion events for Truck Series, and uh, I guess I'm kind of on a short list for, you know, secondary spot for road courses and stuff. Um, it's kind of that's, that's kind of the hardest part to get your foot in the door right there. Is, you know, now that I'm on the, the tour, you know, like, you know, it's, it's all about knowing people and um, definitely have more connections now. Um, but, yeah, maybe, maybe at some point this year I'll get that phone call, hopefully. Hopefully sooner than later. And I know what I know what that's like. Uh, a friend of mine uh, a few years back was running nationwide, and uh, his dad was doing most of the sponsoring. And uh, he gave me a call one day. I need a spotter, for, and I said, "Where are we going to?" He says, "Up in Canada." I said, "How soon is this?" He said, "In uh, a week." I said, "No way, I ain't got no passport." So. Yeah, yeah, I actually got uh, got asked to go to Canada last year, but it was again, yeah, like the last second thing. Between between work and getting a passport, it, it wasn't gonna happen. So. Well, go get you a passport. At least you got it halfway. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, um, that's that was a lesson learned. I'll definitely be getting that going. And I think they're good for what ten years, I think. So hey, get stuff covered down the road for a while. Oh, absolutely. You guys got some questions for him, or did you use them all up already? <laughs> <laughs> We got uh, Alicia, now she's uh, a 12 year old, she's already been racing uh, carts and has gotten into bandoleros and so she's uh, got a whole lot of schooling ahead. Yeah. Uh, any any tips you might want to give her, pass along to her? Um, have you done any carts on dirt yet? No. <laughs> uh, that's probably going to be a, a huge huge advantage if you can run some, some dirt car, uh, dirt cart races, you know, Capital City or Amelia or, you know, I don't know what's, what's down there near Hampton, but, uh, you know, I, like I said, I helped out Chris Johnson and Sam Hunt, and they were state champs on, on dirt from Capital City, so, you, know, you, you definitely learn car control doing that, especially if, you know, you're just starting, so. Yes, um, I, th I think that it, I've always wanted to do a dirt track, but we never, you know, we never really get to do it. But um, I I like to I like to run at Langley, but um, it's actually Langley is pretty challenging for the go karts too. Um, um, it's kind of bumpy, so. But I think I I think that with the dirt, you know, with sliding and everything, I think I, I think that would be fun. Yeah, I know when we went to uh, you know, like I said, Langley's kind of the home track, but when we showed up with the tour, um, the uh, the champ karts were practicing. And a lot of those tour guys have never seen camp carts draft before. So, uh, yeah, that kind, of, kind of blew away the guys that are from the Northeast and from Charlotte. That was, that was pretty cool. So, I mean, if you can, if you can hold your own in the draft with, you know, 20 champ carts at Langley, there's, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to fling that thing around in the dirt either. 
Now you were saying you were doing some spotting and working with Eddie Johnson. How long back was that? Um, I did the full season at Southside with Eddie two years ago, um, and then some one-off races like the the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. Um, a couple times with Eddie, um, Chris, Eddie's son. He and I are actually actually born on the same day, about seven hours apart. So we kind of grew up around each other, and now. Uh, if, if I'm not with Georgie, I'm, I'm with Eddie or Chris, fine at Kenley or Langley or South Boston. Um, Eddie, Eddie got my, my first win as a spotter at Southside. Um, so it was kind of cool, you know, growing up watching him race Bug Terrafield and Wayne Patterson and Shane. And, then, you know, I, I get to go to victory lane with him. So. Well, good. Yeah, because um, Eddie, uh, Eddie's been around a long time. I mean, he was around when I was racing. That was back in. 90s, early 90s. Yeah, I, I grew up when, you know, going to the racetrack, my dad was working with Shane in the K95 car. It was, you know, the K95 car, the 04, and that baby blue 57. So it was, it was really cool, you know, growing up watching those guys race. And then, and now, you know, I go to the racetrack with them. And it's, you know, it's, it, they're definitely, they're definitely, you know, I'm, you know, extended family. Um, you know, Chris and uh, his wife and, Myself and my wife, you know, hang out when we're not racing. So it's, there, it's definitely a lot of fun to be around. You know, they they they, they treat you right. Now you were born in '95. '85. '85. Okay, I'm trying to read it across the room here on the big TV. <laughs> I was gonna say '95. Oh my God, I was racing before he was born. That <laughs> makes me really feel old. But now it's not so bad. <laughs> but uh, so, anybody else in your family race as well? Um. No, my dad still helps out occasionally with uh, with Shane Hunt and the the K and M car, which um, Shane Shane Lockwood actually uh, runs that team and Sam drives for him. So if my dad can't spot, I'm spotting for him. Um, and then you know, try to get my wife to come to some of the races. We're taking my son to his first race last year. Uh, but really, just 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 my dad and I. You know, I grew up around it and he grew up around it. So cool. You got any questions for him, Maddie? Are you pulling another blank thing? <laughs> you got the bun on too tight. Sorry about that. She's wearing a bun on the top of her head. I think she's got it on too tight. She's really blowing it on questions tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, now she races Pro 6s out at Langley. She used to race uh, yeah. Bandoleros as well. Um, but now she's geared it up and going for something a little bit stronger. Have you ever watched some of the Pro 6 races at Langley? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I know when we first started uh, racing down in the chain, probably four years ago, uh, the class was a whole lot smaller. I uh, think it was kind of a down period, but last year when I was helping Bobby Hall out uh, spot for him, the uh, the competition with that with that class has been, has, has been really good, uh, especially last year. Um, I guess, I guess, People would kind of look at that as more of an entry level to late models now for the grand stock or the street stock because they, you know, just the, the power ratio and the size of the vehicle. So they're, uh, they're definitely going to get show down there. I like to see them, I like to see them in different tracks, but. We actually, um, we actually ran the Thanksgiving Classic at, um, I think, no, we didn't run the Thanksgiving Classic. We ran the Autumn Classic, uh, at, Southern National Kenley. and yep Kenley. Kenley and we didn't have the 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 support in the division was not very high that week because we only had five five or six cars show up um one one wrecked out during practice um she's a beginner and she's still learning but she's gonna get a I'm sure she's gonna get the hang of it this year and then we had to wreck out during the race, so three of us finished. I finished second, um, but the, it was a very, it was very interesting. It was a lot of fun taking those cars to Lang or Kenley. Yeah, that's one of my one of my favorite tracks. Um, Me too. <laughs> I actually spotted for Chris Johnson the last two years at Thanksgiving Classic and the, the local modified. We we won the last two years and. Uh, 
I knew the Pro Six was going to try to run down there, but like you said, the support for that division, I guess, with Langley being kind of a home track, is, is still growing, but hopefully. Plus, it was during the holidays, and everybody was, it was kind of a last-minute thing, and. Yeah, yeah, so I, I talked to, you know, again, I talked to, to Bobby Hall about. Uh, he had work, I think. He was going to, yeah, asked if he was going to run it, and he asked, you know, we were talking about me going down and spotting for him, and. It, between between work and you know the the support for the class being down, it was I guess it was gonna cost cost more and be more time consuming than what it was gonna be worth with only a couple cars going. But hopefully, you know, I definitely like to see those cars run that track. It's, it's one of my favorite tracks. I like going there. Hopefully next year or hope this year. Sorry, <laughs> still getting this way that. Hopefully um this year around that time we can possibly get down there sometime again if we have the car count up enough. Yeah, the, uh, the the Southern Modified Tour, we, we're not going back there this year, which I'm kind of disappointed about, because it's a really good, I mean, it's a, it's a perfect track for, for what we do. Um, so hopefully hopefully we can get out there with some, some late models, some local modified stuff. Now, I'm, I'm looking at your Facebook page. Who's this little guy on there? <laughs> That's my son, Caleb. Cool. You gonna get him into some doing some racing? I uh, I would I'd love to. Um, he's you know you can you can buy him all the toys in the world, but he's just gonna walk around the house with two matchbox cars in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, if, there, if there's a race on TV and I'm watching, he'll he'll sit in my lap and watch. And uh, he can he's he just turned two in November, and if he sees a 43 car, he already says you know petty or. <laughs> You're gonna, you're in for the haul, buddy. Let me tell you, when he starts wanting to start pedaling and then starts putting it up to gas and then late models and then ARCA and then uh, you never know. Well, hopefully, we'll, uh, I'll have enough connections by then if Daddy can retire. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh, uh, any uh, words of wisdom for the two ladies here? yourself sometimes being aggressive for your driver? Um, you know, I, I probably got a list of 10, 15 guys, different guys I've spotted for, and every one of them has a different uh, personality they like on the radio. With with Shane, when I was spotting for Shane at Southside, it was, he wanted information constantly. Um, when I was spotting for Eddie Johnson, it was just so much around him. Um, you kind of have to learn. Um, you know, the first time I spotted for George after practice, I said, you know, tell me when I need to shut up and tell me when I talk, need to talk more. So it just depends on the driver. Yeah. You got to yeah, you got to kind of be, you know, be a cheerleader, but don't be a don't be too much on the radio. I I, I noticed that a couple of times when I when I spot for certain people, I know that they're a little bit aggressive, and having been a driver myself, and I sit there and I think about the timing. You know, can you slip in front of them just quick enough to maybe get off of the light tap and still be able to take the spot or, you know, something like that. So I, I sometimes find there's the possibility for that to happen. Yeah, um, and, and it also depends on what, you know, the, the car they're driving and where they're at. You know, when we were at first with the Modified, when the guys are in the corner, they can't really see four or five cars in front of them, so you try and cut down on the talking so they can focus and then run up again once you go straight away. And it's the same thing with, with Langley. You know, you're constantly turning there. So you want to make sure you're not talking while they're trying to get their marks going into the corner or getting back on the gas. So and it also comes with, with knowing the knowing the tracks and, you know, 
you can't you can't always apply the same technique to every racetrack. Cool. All right, Jesse. Well, let's go ahead and let you get out of here so you can go play with your little one. So you go give him a, a car to go play with. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate it. Hey, we'll get you back on here again. Uh, when you're down here at Langley, make sure you give us a shout. Maybe uh, get you come in here and play with us on a Wednesday night. All right, we'll do. All right, talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Now you finally got a nice grin. <laughs> earlier, what was it? You reminded me earlier when you were sitting there, you reminded me like of uh, some of the figure skaters on ice when they get ready to start. <laughs> that, that look like you've been sucking on a lemon, you know, and it's... <laughs> Why do you always pick on me? Because <laughs> I can. <laughs> You're pick onable. She's next, but she's still got to get. You have to go ahead and finish up with your stuff. I, I want to let you finish up. Okay. Um, do you remember where you left off? I think it was my mentor, right? Yes. Mentor. She almost had a blonde moment. You feel better now? <laughs> I had to make her feel a little bit good, okay? <laughs> we'll see how much okay. you can blush, too. <laughs> Makeup! Oh, go ahead. You mentor, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. We well, like to have fun on the show, so, in case you've never watched one of the shows before. They get interesting. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, well, like, like I said, my mentor is my, my mom and dad. Yeah. Um, my other mentor is my crew chief, Joseph Barron. He is because he... Does he have a speed shop or something like hmm? that? Does he have a speed shop or something like that? Oh yeah, just a very speed shop. Um, I always, I always tell him that, and he always has his big grin on his face. So good. <laughs> so, um, he's my mentor because he is just, oh, he's always, even if I finish last, he always has a big smile on his face because, you know, he works on the car, so he's very happy of the way it turned out. You know, if sometimes he beats himself up, I'm like Joseph. I know you're doing good. I know you're doing good. It's okay. <laughs> Take a chill pill. <laughs> now, when you're out there running, by the way, uh, I got a post from somebody when you were talking about Danica, and they were saying, oh, yeah, Danica's going to win in 2015. <laughs> good luck for her. <laughs> I, I actually have, we, this is a whole other story. Let me give it to you real quick. Actually, one of the guys went to Danica. You know Al Pierce? <laughs> yeah, I know you know Al Pierce. He works for Auto Week, and he's usually on the show. He's uh, off down in Charlotte this week. But uh, we got Danica to autograph a picture to him. Oh. And, for, and he was just would not believe that we, we actually had her really do that. And so we finally had him go to talk to her. <laughs> and, and he was sitting here flipping it around, and he says, nobody's ever going to see me showing this. I said, uh, uh, I said we have you on video. And I went back to the video and cut the section where he flipped that sucker up and started posting on Facebook. First thing he did when he came back says, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so, but anyway, somebody was, you know, kudos to you for mentioning Danica and everything. So, which is good. Now, what, I know you're still young. You've got a lifetime of racing ahead of you. What do you feel your next big steps are going to be? Well, I'm thinking about going into like a modified or something, something a little bit bigger after Bandoleros, after I start racing Bandoleros for a couple of years to get a little bit more experience with the track. Um, but I really, really want to go to NASCAR. I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing at your dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dad's making faces back here, huh? He's looking for that, the, the money in the wallet thing. It's OPM, other people's money, okay? That's the three letters you got to remember, OPM. But, uh, so you've got a long list of things that you want to be able to do. Now, you're going to try to jump from Bandoleros to Modifieds, or why not borrow one of her cars and Go. Madison's got one car. She <laughs> she needs it. Take take and, and and say, hey, you've already won your championship for the year. Let me borrow it for a race or something. See, so, yeah, I'm looking out for you. We're looking to win one this year. Um, you uh, do you ever think about getting up with Matt Mullins, talking to him? We have, and that's Bill's brother, correct? No. Mo sorry, Mullis, sorry. Mullins. 
I if, if you watch some of the laps, Matt well, Matt Mullins, he, he won the first Pro 6 championship they had. Oh, I have not met him. Oh. I have not met him. I'll have to get you two together. Maybe you know. get you some... <laughs> Give me some insight. <laughs> huh? Give me some insight. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, whatever it takes, get you out there, get you up front, get you a win, get you a championship. That's what we're going for this year. Get, get more sponsors. See, look at that, all that, just lined that, that all up for you, didn't it? Just lined that all out there for you. Um, I, I just wondered from going from Bandoleros to Modifieds, that's that's a big weight differential in, in the car and how it handles. Because Modifieds are little monsters. Yeah, I think, I think I'm probably going to start out a little, like, a little slower, you know. Um, I'll probably, you know, like the restrictor plates and stuff like that, my... Micro Chief, I guarantee you, he'll find a way to govern it down a little bit. So, because <laughs> I know I've when I've watched them racing, just even at Langley, they'll come off the turn and you'll see them that left front tires just up off the ground. Scary stuff. Eh. <laughs> eh. Goes, I'm not scared. <laughs> I just put that out there, but it's fun <laughs> to me. Just like you guys, I'm I'm, I'm racing it hard. If I could still do it, I'd do it. We get you more. Uh, good fit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Hey, at least it's fifty pounds less than it used to be. But anyway, uh, yeah, racing has always been fun for me. I remember when I was a little teeny guy, probably about that tall. My father used to race out at Langley Speedway and China Chinese Corner. I know that's way before your time. <laughs> That you'd have to take and research and Google it sometime. Look up the Chinese Corner racetrack. Uh, it, I think it was out in Virginia Beach, wasn't it? Uh, huh? Yep. Uh, and it, it was one of the earlier, that was way before NASCAR. So, I mean, when my dad had me, he was already 40 something. So, a long time ago. But uh, that's back uh, when you watch old black and white shows with the cars where it's not like Keystone Cops type thing. That's how long ago that was. I enjoy those shows. <laughs> Good. But, anywho. Yeah, but I remember being in the car on the passenger side and he was doing a few little slow laps around the track and stuff like that. And, 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 and talk about meeting people. Uh, we were over at the house one day and he gets this phone call. We go down to the local, local uh, Dodge dealership. He says, hey, you want to go meet Richard Petty? I go, Sure, because he's always big talking Richard Petty and everything, you know, about how buddy buddy they are and all this stuff. And I'm an eight year old kid going, yeah, right. <laughs> Get out of the car. Richard sees him, comes over, and they start hugging on each other like long lost brothers. Here's my jaw. <laughs> Just never know what's going to happen out there. Who you're going to run into? Who you're going to find as your friends? People to make connections with. That's something both y'all will need to be doing. Uh, future reference. I'm going to do the Al Pierce thing. Okay. When, you, when you're talking to people doing interviews, when you get famous, as if you are famous already, okay? You're, famous already. you're on our show, you're famous already. Mm -hmm. But famous. <laughs> just don't do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when, if you wear glasses, sunglasses, take them off. Make sure you talk directly to him. Make sure you mention his name back to him so at least he thinks that you know who you're talking to. This is just little things he puts out to all the young drivers. I don't know if he did that to you when you were here or not. I wasn't with him. You weren't with no, him? No, I was with him. Um, well, we're going to get you in fun. I, 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 you've introduced me to him, I'm pretty sure, but... In two weeks, he'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> so you might be back yet in here. Hey. But the, the thing is, I want you guys, you know, to get as much exposure as you can. You're both on the hard side, the hard sell of racing. Uh, you're in a, a women's sport that have too many men in it, okay? That's how you look at it. How's that? Like some of that. Like that? Get, kick out some of them guys. There's too many guys in the women's sport. Um, but yeah, you guys need to have the ability to show your capabilities. You're responsible out there. You're aggressive out there when you need to be. And let the people know that y'all were somebody they should rally behind. Sponsors, fans, 
get as many friends as you can, so that way they can talk to other people. Facebook account, social networking. Connections. Remember that. Huh? Connections. Connections. That's correct. Um, let's see. What have you got coming up other than... Pro 6. We're going to be running full season in Pro 6. Um, hopefully if we get the financial... We're actually entered in the... Um, right now we're entered in the Champion Spark Plug contest. That's right. And... Why didn't you say that earlier? We kind of already had that out there. Come on now. Yeah. Um, we're entered in that, and uh, we're we're settling in between tenth and eleventh right now on most viewed, and we've got some major support fan wise voting daily and everything, but um, hopefully we can hopefully we can grasp that, and I my video I feel was very marketable, but showed my side of what I do and everything right. at the same time. And Bobby Pierce, which is the previous winner from last year, he gave me some tips on what I should include and in everything in mm -hmm. my video and I followed that and I think we I think we have a winning video. We'll see what happens in the next month or and I think the I think it ends March twenty third. Yeah. Now have either one of y'all thought about doing anything with Rev Racing? I have, we are probably going to, depending on what happens with this year, we are going to, I am going to try out for the combine this year. Um, actually, um, I'm trying out for Rev Racing. Um, they, they picked me for the tryouts and I was actually very happy about that and I think that's just an honor in itself. Um, but I really hope I get in. <laughs> <laughs> and that was with the Bandoleros, right? Yes. Good. Um, how 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 stiff is the competition? Do you think? Um, I think the competition is pretty stiff. I mean, there's some there's some really good drivers. Wrong answer. Uh -huh. I am their competition. <laughs> we get you going yet? But I, I appreciate what you're looking at. You got a lot of people out there. You've got to compete against them. Uh, people you've never raced against. Some of them you may have, but I'm sure most of them you haven't. So, you got some good competition and, and something to look forward to having fun with. Hope so. <laughs> so, always remember that. It's like, I don't know if you ever hear the saying, uh, what was it? Uh, kick butt and take names later. <laughs> Just straight kick butt. Don't even bother with their names. They're going to take yours. Remember that. <laughs> That's what you want it to be. We are looking um, for, also, we're looking for partners and for, we want to possibly run um, a few past late model races mm -hmm. this year if we're looking to either buy a car or lease a car at least um, because we are looking into for the following year to go full late model. Right. You, so. ever, you ever thought about, have, have you got... Well, I don't, I'm, I don't know if you do or not. Have you got the potential to find sponsors to maybe even do it at a K&N race? And doing it at Langley since it's someplace you know? K&N is definitely in the future. <laughs> I mean, we you've, are... You've, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I was just going to say, we. That's, that's a very big... That's my next goal. Because you do have a, a team in the area that does have some K&N cars <laughs> that race pretty good at Langley. So the Godovics are the Godovics are friends. Yes, they're, <laughs> connections. They're, they're great people. Yes, Brandon and his dad Rick both. Yes, it's crazy at times, but yeah. <laughs> as long as you're having fun at it. Uh, anything else? You, you got any more sponsors you want to thank while you're out there? Um, I would like to thank Kings Plumbing. Um, I would like to thank Selena Electric, Amsoil. Um, I would like to thank Champions Against Bullying and um, helping helping kids makes my heart race. And I think I think that's about it. I think I have a couple more. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh yeah, mom and dad definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the number one beat out. <laughs> um, we do have uh, some very. We are settling into our 2015 season so, soon, so we do have some new, new deals coming up, and we have some very big news coming up for um, 
I can't tell you right now. You'll, you'll hear about it. Um, well, you can tell me right now. I won't tell nobody. I won't tell nobody. We do have some big news coming up. And, um, so you can definitely find us at Maddie Ryan Racing on Facebook. And okay. You'll hear about that soon enough, sometime, hopefully by next week. And also... I um, have the number. I know. <laughs> also, um, if I would love for everyone to go and vote at championsparkplugs.com for Maddie Ryan Racing Daily. We need all the votes we can get because we would love to partner with them for our 2015 season. And now, explain a little bit more about that. I, I hate to throw this yeah. in at the last second because I, I just know you, you've been saying go vote, go vote, go vote. Explain to them what, what it's all about. What it um, is. It's a daily vote. It's um you it's a register. It's a one-time registration fee. You can also be entered into the voter sweepstakes, which you win prizes as well throughout the contest. It's um a two-round voting contest. Voting this for the first round. This ends February third. I think two to two and a half weeks later, the second round of voting starts up, right. and that will end on March twenty-third. And it's basically. A video contest showcasing how you represent yourself as a champion and how you are able to market their brand champion. Okay. And if you win, what happens then? Grand prize winner earns fifty thousand dollars and the there are fourteen or fifteen five thousand dollar prizes. That'll help. Yes it will. <laughs> Just a wee bit. <laughs> Just tick. <laughs> That'll get you the K and car for a couple K and car for a race or two. I actually did I I created my own video, I edited it and everything, so that that was a that was a bit of a challenge because I've never done something that big. Should have come here, goodness. I know, I know. All the crazy I stuff I have, God. Oh. I had a few glitches, I about called you. <laughs> <laughs> Help! I know. Anywho. Uh, you guys hungry? I had dinner. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> you know we always go out afterwards. But anywho, she's driving. She's driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did just was it, turned was 16 it something years about wreck somebody, somebody said something about a wreck while ago. And they that had wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't me. Anywho. I was just in the car. Just in the car. Uh, I'll be nice. Uh -huh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Like to thank you girls for stopping by and sharing your time with us. Well, no, thank you for letting us talk on your show. <laughs> oh, we always have fun. Always. <laughs> if we ain't having fun, I ain't going to be doing it. Trust me. <laughs> Everybody, come back and see us next week on Let's Talk Racing. See ya! Bye. Bye.